The Sims 4 Snowy Escape releases November 13th and we just had the main gameplay livestream a bit earlier than usual. In this video, I'm going to summarize everything major for you and throw in some details that will help you to decide if this pack is right for you. There are a few things that fit into the focus of this channel that I'll enjoy telling you about. Because the info is scattered throughout the stream, I'm going to focus first on the base game updates that are coming to all Sims 4 players just before this pack's release. First are Sentiments, a system that tries to show how Sims feel individually about a shared experience. These can last for various times with weaker sentiments only sticking around for a few days and longer ones lasting for weeks. The severe or important events are more likely to stick. Sadly, we don't know a lot about how these work, but in general, they appear to affect relationships and you can reminisce to trigger emotions. Another example is like when two Sims have a grudge, it may make one uncomfortable around the other. When a Sim gets a new sentiment, their relationship panel will have an outline so you have some idea something has changed. It's cool this is a free update and Sims will be able to have four sentiments at once. I don't know about you, but when I think about it, I really only have about four important memories and strong opinions at a time anyway. Another base game update is what you're looking at, the new Sim profile page, which can be viewed for any Sim. This is going to show sentiments and other information such as a Sim's career, traits, and relationship bits along with lifestyles if you have Snowy Escape. I do kind of like this, but it feels like you'll be opening it a lot to see about sentiments. It, it seems to show you sentiments broken up by the sim they're shared with. A small but popular request that is coming is the ability to add rental lots to any world. While Mount Komarabi will have rentals pre-installed, you will need to add rentals as a new lot type in your other worlds, but this will add the ability to vacation there at any time. Finally, you'll soon be able to build platforms. You can use them on any level of a home and put platforms on top of platforms. These are gonna be nice for builders, of course, but to the rest of us, they're steps. If you build a platform only one high, it appears Sims will do the step down animation. If you wanna make a toddler suffer, use a lot of these in all your builds. If you build platforms too high, a Sim will not be able to walk there. You may be able to make a kids only area using these as adults wouldn't be able to walk in, but children and toddlers can. On to the stream summary. We started in the neighborhood of Wakaba, which is the youngest neighborhood with modern architecture. We were hosted by one of my favorite Sim gurus, Graham Nardone, who was also producer on this pack. Simlessy, Deligracy, James Turner, and Lil Simsy also did some building on this pack, so we have some better than average lots to look forward to. They built literally every lot in this pack using EA's guidelines. The first real gameplay element they showed was river swimming. In Mount Komarabi, you can swim in all the bodies of water. There are obviously koi in the water, and Graham said that with this pack, you can put koi in your fountains on any lot. We saw Wakaba's main plaza where festivals will be held. If festivals make you think of city living features, you're definitely not wrong. This one is where the festival of youth will happen and we saw the community's mascot Yamachan. This guy hosts the void critter hunt during the festival of youth. Next we saw a child in a school uniform very briefly, but that will be a thing for any children in this world who go to school. They showed a new science table you get with this pack. I guess people wanted a new design to use for children. This is when we got into the bit about platforms which we've gone over. The child here is embarrassed because she didn't take her shoes off when she entered the house. So that's a thing in this culture. There isn't an animation for this, so don't expect your sims to bend over. <laughs> There's a little whirl animation on their feet. A new rabbit hole style career is coming with Snowy Escape and it's called Salaried Person. It is meant to show long work hours, even if it only shows this sim going from nine to five. I don't know. They need logic and charisma and will need to exercise to decompress. You can take supervisor or expert branches. One will do things like host meetings and the other will work on spreadsheets. 
There is a cool legendary stamina trait you can get that will help you to work longer hours. So you can just keep working forever. I think now would be a good time to ask you to like my video. Let's get into lifestyles. Lifestyles were touched on here and there are 16 in total. Our sim has workaholic, frequent traveler, and hungry for love. Graham explained that if traits are intrinsic to personality, the lifestyles are more like lived experiences. Lifestyles seem to have a very wide impact when you take them on, which is done by living a certain way. Some lifestyles oppose each other, like hungry for love and single and loving it. That makes sense. Each day you get a bit of progress toward one and they can be stopped by neglecting the lifestyle or you can ditch it by spending all of 300 points to get a potion in the reward store. Lifestyles and sentiments are core gameplay experiences and will add depth to the game together, even if it doesn't seem to have as big a negative impact as I had hoped by introducing strong penalties for not living a lifestyle. So lifestyles in general will apparently just decay if you don't use them. We moved on to Sinbamachi, the more traditional area of town. This area is absolutely beautiful and there's even a hot spring spillway here. The festival of light will be held here and while we didn't get to see it, we're told there are fireworks and little touches like paper lanterns floating in the water. So eye candy. <laughs> he checked the board with his sim which has an extreme sports enthusiast aspiration, one of the two new ones in this pack. This board gives you the time for the next festival and you can use it to read wildlife reports before going on an expedition up the mountain. And it's gonna tell you what insects you might see out in the wild. You can use vending machines to buy insect repellent and bombs to help you if you're bitten. If this reminds you of Jungle Adventure, you're right. It's new types of insect attacks and cures in a bottle, featuring murder hornets. Thanks 2020, I'm now looking forward to civil unrest and the meteorite due sometime in December. Based on recent history, I think we'll all be done with this pack by then. The new vending machine dispenses simmies. These are little characters that actually appear on screen when you open the capsules, which are like pokeballs. He talked about how vending machines can kill you if your item happens to get stuck and you shake it. Sometimes it'll give you the item and other times it'll fall on your sim and kill them for failing to respect Newton's third law. If your sim's cold up on the mountain, you can buy hot food at a vending machine to help them warm up. This might be important when you're climbing. If a sim gets hot, you can also cool down. This will probably remind you of seasons. More on that later. Next, we learned about a truly new feature, walking, but in groups. <laughs> I kid, as this is kind of new because sims can talk and hike together in a group and it seems to help your sim to achieve mindfulness. Remember this from the trailer? Yay! That's not only video editing, it's an actual feature you get when sims are on a meditative walk in a sort of mindfulness meditation. Being emotionally mindful allows you to be so at peace you can trigger any emotion you want. This lets you use the surge emotions interaction and be any emotion. Using the hot springs, hiking, painting, or get a massage from Spa Day can trigger this by letting Sims become at peace. The vacation system was shown now, allowing you to go on a vacation at any time and select how many days you want to stay. So now it's possible to travel to Solani for a few days if you want to go into Worlds first and set up a rental property or two through the new lot type. When your sims are on vacation, you can go into the mailbox menu to buy supplies that you can place, like if you need a toddler bed. By the way, there's a new space heater in this pack. Graham had his sims sit to have a hot pot and noted that you can choose their utensil preferences, so more meals can be eaten with chopsticks, and you can void them all together if you want to. Chopsticks first made their appearance in City Living. The Kotatsu table these sims are using is upgradable to make the area warmer and to better insulate food. Now we headed into Yunimatsu, 
the snowy mountain neighborhood where there will be year-round snow. In this area and on mountain excursions, you'll have a few kinds of snow-specific weather, whether you have seasons or not. They didn't just give weather away, but it makes sense for the mechanic of climbing, etc. that you have weather in this area, while all others will be the typical sunny day without seasons. The gondolas are all rabbit holes, but I guess that's to be expected, although some people were disappointed anyway. We now got into the new skills. Honestly, aside from the new career, the three new skills are the main gameplay features of this pack, and they do look to be narrow in their use. So, when you're new to skiing or snowboarding, you can use the bunny slopes to practice. Kids can also join parents to use the new sledding activity here. All in all, sims do tricks, and there are at least a couple courses you can take on to help them level up in these skills. I'm relieved to report that, at least for skiing and snowboarding, and after such a short ride, you don't have to click again, you can choose to go once or do it until they're told to stop. You can use rental skis and snowboards, but they're often low quality. Buying your own from the Bits and Baubles vending machine is recommended if you want to take these skills seriously. I know that's where I'd buy my skis, from a vending machine. <laughs> A shop would have been nice, <laughs> but that's not all. You can't hang your skis on the wall or anything. It's one of those inventory only items. You can make a bit of money with these skills, but it wasn't really shown. Sims can actually record point of view snowboarding videos and upload them for fame if you have get famous or sell them for some cash. They said there are other perks to leveling snowboarding, like you can get a snow bro relationship bit that increases skill gains or let you lower fatigue, endure injuries, and hype them up to get energized. They had a sim get food and at one point said there were 15 different foods in this pack. I mean, there are a lot of foods in the game and not much difference in what they do but it does represent Japanese cuisine to fit the theme. Moving on, I was really struck by how nice this place looks at night. I don't know that this is specific to the festival of snow that's going on, but I don't think so. The dinosaur is a nice remodel of the one in the base game, I guess, but you can see it's quite pretty here. It really feels like the world got the vast majority of their attention this time. Those two sports aside, rock climbing skill is another major feature and it does have a side bit that is interesting. Sims can go on excursions to the mountain. A mountain climbing excursion is a new type of social event that you access through the menu where you'd normally plan a party. They started off at the onsen bathhouse where you can relax in the hot springs, but you do need to shower first else you get some stink eye by other sims. If you woohoo in this thing or use it without showering, it'll get gross faster. <laughs> Something my friend and I noticed in this scene, simmering rage, plus one angry? So few things have a big emotional impact, blah. I mean, this is part of sentiments, so it's adding on to the emotion system, just not in a very big way. Anyway, expeditions have a leader and you can check Sim's readiness and equip their climbing gear. You head up the mountain to the start of the climbing route and Sims have a unique walk in deep snow and their, their feet actually go in. It's a, unfortunately a feature only for this area, not in other worlds. The Sims will need to get up the rock wall through various climbing tones. You can climb courageously, carefully, and these have an impact on the chance of success or failure. This is a medium height wall, but the taller ones can be very dangerous. To make it safer, you're able to look at the wall and inspect it before you start a climb so you can gauge how the weather is going to impact it. So you get up this wall and teleport to an area further away from civilization that isn't on the map. Getting up that first wall just gets you to the base camp. 
This whole segment feels like jungle adventure as there's some randomization to what loads when you go. There might be a helpful tent you can use or a campfire, but you may want to bring things with you just in case. While on the excursion, Sims might get attacked by bats much like a jungle adventure adventure, as stated before. Sims might get injured or be too unwell to continue on the trek, so managing mood and injuries and animal attacks will be needed to make it to the top. I think it boils down to RNG getting you or not and possibly being able to overcome that. They made efforts to make excursions replayable, but we'll have to see how that plays out. As they head up the mountain, a thunder snowstorm hits. Like I said earlier, you do not require seasons to experience this because it would be too watered down without it. It looks like there's a lot of help on your way up, but it could be random. I just noticed a pea bush and a tent twice, so managing moods won't be particularly hard. It might be wise to own a tent anyway, It'd just be nice if this wasn't mind-numbingly easy. This big wall is the most dangerous part of the expedition. This sim got lucky, so we didn't see one fall to their death, which was somewhat a letdown if you're a mean person. He had two sims woohoo in the ice cave now, and it sure looks chilly. <sighs> Bats and hearts come out of the cave, but we don't know what it looks like at the, you know, the end. You can go into this rabbit hole and see a lot of different outcomes, probably pick up some collectibles on the way. Being on these excursions will give sentiments and plaques. Getting to the top will give you a gold on the excursion event. They said there's a reward when you reach the summit. Evidently, there's a lot you can build one up there, so you can customize how it looks. It might be fun to take sims up here once or twice, but it's possible you'll build up here and then never come back. We now had a look at some of the build by. There are new half walls in every size you could possibly want now. Uh, my friend noted uh, that someone showed platforms can be rounded as well, which is nice. You can turn lifestyles off if you hate them, and lifestyles can decay if you stop using them. There may or may not be a limit on how many you can have, but it stands to reason maintaining several will be challenging. And as I said, 300 in the reward store lets you delete one. I guess it's not as bad as the 500 point mermaid kelp. This is where they clarified that sentiments can decay or grow. You can have up to four at a time and a weak short term sentiment could be knocked off by a big one, but only four. In the reveal trailers, all those shots of Simstagram were not part of the game, just editing. So not some expansion of the Simstagram system, I'm sad to say. Now they went into cast and showed girly hairs up until someone thankfully asked about traits. Evidently there are over a dozen female hairstyles and only three for males, which isn't anything new. As I said, someone asked about new traits. Proper is one of the new traits and makes Sims respectful and prefer to use respectful greetings and don't like witnessing improper behavior. Uh, like, when they b see Sims being mean, they find it uncomfortable. The other trait is adventurous, but I don't think they went over that very much. Or at all. <laughs> there are also two new aspirations. One built around the winter sports, and another that is more about exploring and traveling. There are shirts you can only buy at festivals, or for having made it to the mountain summit. And, of course, you can... Dress up as Yamachan and unlock snow gear in Cass. Onsen can be built in any neighborhood. The hot springs is the main thing for these builds. But you can make a nice spot for Sims to relax in any world. Overall, this is one of the most beautiful worlds they've made. You're probably used to it, but get ready to see Nancy Landgrab and Marcus Flex walking around. Who knows, maybe the Batu aliens will even show up to make the world more exciting and diverse. <laughs> this one feels a bit thin on the gameplay, but you can see the extra effort that went into the world. Some game changers out there have an early copy. I was not one of them, but I'm relying on the live stream to get my info. If you liked this, please give it a like. <laughs> These are very long videos to edit, but I enjoy making them. 
Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with coverage of Snowy Escape when it launches on November 13th.